What's going on guys? Welcome to 320 Tech. My name is Kelvin. I'm a Sydney based tech enthusiast, entrepreneur and stock investor aiming to make videos to help you guys out. In today's video, I want to show you guys how to get started with stock market investing. I want to break down this video by explaining to you guys why investing is important, how to find the best broker for you, the variety of different investments that you can make, how to start investing and at the very end of this video, I'm going to give you guys a bunch of my favorite tips and tricks that help make my investment journey easier. But make sure you stay till the very end for that so you guys don't make the same mistake that I made and lose your equity. So I know a bunch of you guys are dying to know the answer to the big question. Why is investing important? Let me give you guys an example. Let's say that you guys have $10,000 in your savings account that you've accumulated over the past few years. Regardless of what bank that you guys are with here in Australia, the best interest interest rate that you guys can get right now is between 1 and 2% per year. That might sound great at first since you're passively making money every single year without doing anything but every single year all the money that we have is worth 2% less due to inflation. Therefore if you're someone who's leaving your money sitting inside of a savings account you're basically letting that money get eaten away due to inflation resulting in it losing its value and buying power the longer that you leave it there. In contrast the average stock market return is roughly 5 to 7% year on year. If you also take into account the compound interest that occurs over time within these investments you'll soon realize that the interest that you make with your money will make you more money as time goes on. So basically, the earlier that you start investing in the stock market, the more money that you'll have by the time that you retire. This is why it's extremely important to invest the money as early as you can. I know that this was a lot to take in at first, but it's important that I go through all the fundamental reasons as to why someone like you should invest. Overall, if you don't understand why investing is important, you put yourself at risk of making the wrong financial decisions. Now let's Let's move on to how to get started with investing in the stock market. The very first thing that you guys should be focusing on is setting up an emergency fund. I know from experience that it can be extremely tempting to just drop all your money into a broker and start investing in shares as soon as you have some money saved up. But it's crucial that you have at least three months of your living expenses saved up just to make sure that you protect yourself from any unexpected things from occurring. I think now more than ever, with the pandemic still affecting a majority of the world, there's no better time to have an emergency fund than right now. This will give you guys peace of mind when investing since you know that you're protected from any surprises that may occur. The very first step to investing is finding an online broker. Here in Australia, we have a wide variety of different brokers that offer different benefits. My personal top four online brokers listed in no particular order are CMC Markets, Stake, IG and Comsec. There are also other online brokers such as Raise and Spaceship that will invest the money for you based on what's best in the market right now. Every single brokerage site has a list of pros and cons. This includes things like brokerage fees, having the option to invest in Australian stock, American stock, or both and the ease of use of how the app or website functions. Step number two, whenever you guys buy or sell shares, you need to pay the broker a fee. This fee is around $10 when investing in Australian shares and about $19 when investing in US shares. Let me give you guys an example. Let's say that you guys want to invest about $1,000 within Australian stock. The entire process will require you guys to buy and sell your stock at least one time, meaning buying it for the first time and eventually selling it to get the returns back to you. Since the brokerage fee for Australian stock is about $10, you need to, at the very least, make $20 to break even. Furthermore, many new investors tend to invest smaller amounts at first to test the waters and eventually invest more as time goes on. This leads to multiple brokerage fees being charged, which can add up to be a substantial amount as time goes on. Step number three, one important factor to consider when choosing an online broker is which bank you're currently with. One of the most popular online brokers right now is Comsec. Since Comsec is associated with Commonwealth Bank, you can almost instantaneously send funds from your savings account to your Comsec app. This might not seem important at first, but other third party online brokers that aren't linked to your savings account can take multiple business days for a single transfer to occur. If you do have a savings account that 
has an associated online broker. It's definitely worth considering trading with them. But ultimately, do your own research to understand which online broker is best for you. Step number four. Every brokerage site has different platforms that are available for their customers. If having a mobile app is important for you, it's definitely worth considering checking out the list of brokerage sites that have the option available. Alongside this, the user interface and maturity of these apps can differ massively, with some apps only offering some basic information, whereas others are able to give you guys more of an extensive overview of your investments. I personally would rather have all the information about investing that I require within a single app instead of having multiple tabs open on a site like Yahoo Finance. Having everything that I need centralized within a single app makes investing simpler. And the more simpler your investments can be, the more likely that you are able to invest smarter. After you've completed these four steps, it's time to decide on what you want to invest in. The two main types of investments are ETFs or index funds and individual stocks. The general rule of thumb that is widely advised by long-term and professional investors is that newer investors should generally be looking to invest in ETFs and index funds. This is because they are usually cost-effective and the safer option. Since you're investing in the world's most successful companies, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Funds, and it's basically an investment within a list of the top 100 to 200 companies within a certain region. An example of this is the ASX 200, which is basically the top 200 companies within Australia. Alongside this, there are also ETF managers such as Vanguard and BetaShares. And these companies have a wide variety of ETFs that you can invest in. ETFs and index funds are one of the best ways to develop passive income over a long period of time. ETFs, like any other stock, will differ based on whatever one that you're choosing. However, since they track the market, you can expect around a 7% yearly return. One thing that I do want to mention is that past performance does not equate to future performance. So make sure that you do your own research to ensure that you make the right investments. If you're someone who's been investing in the stock market for a while or are prepared for a more sophisticated form of investing, you can also invest in individual stocks. Buying individual stocks can net you guys a significant amount when done correctly. But Investing in this kind of stock can be extremely volatile, meaning you are able to lose a lot of money if you have not done your research. My general rule of thumb is only invest an amount that you're willing to lose. What I recommend for you guys who are interested in investing in individual stock is researching things like annual reports, financials, understanding the management team, and buying stocks when they are undervalued. By doing this, you are able to calculate the margin of safety price and get a better understanding of the company as a whole. I know so far I've mentioned a lot of information and it can be quite difficult to digest everything. So I'm going to end this video on a bunch of really quick tips that I made when I made my own personal mistakes when starting my stock investment journey. Tip number one, take it slow. I have a bunch of friends and family who decided that it would be wise to invest a large amount of money at one time and they ended up losing a large portion of the capital. My advice to you guys when starting out is to invest no more than 20% of your savings and then wait it out. I would give it at least a few months so you have the opportunity to observe trends within the stock market. This would give you guys a better understanding of how fluctuations can occur. Just like everything else in life, the more that you do something, the better that you'll become at it. Tip number two, do not take any advice from articles or social media. A majority of websites and articles are designed to direct your investments within a certain direction, and that direction is usually at a loss. Social media and articles are often based on speculation, not facts. Speculation is one of the worst things out there right now because it often attempts to get a crowd to invest within a certain stock to increase its value. My advice to you guys is do your own individual research. Check the company's track record and finance over the past few years. Do your due diligence and get the facts. That way, you'll be investing under your own terms and not letting your emotions dictate your decisions. Tip number three, don't overthink. One thing that every new investor needs to understand is that the stock market will fluctuate every single day. This means that stocks are gonna rise and fall and there's really no way to predict the market. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, 
Don't let a drop in the market ruin your day. Understand that your investments are long-term investments. And even though checking your online broker is good, don't get too caught up in it. You need to be able to see the bigger picture because focusing on a small loss will only ruin your day. Let me know in the comments if you guys found these tips helpful. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you guys want to see some more investing videos in the future. Anyways, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.